Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to the farm. It's toasty out there today, and I am out of breath. It's time for, oh, what do I got here? Ice cold pop. Not that one. I'm gonna set that back in there for a while. Maybe sneak a cheeky little beer mid-afternoon. Shh, won't tell anyone. Anyways, it's been a busy morning here on the farm. We got a uh, text from Doug over at uh, Beaver Hill Auction there yesterday saying, hey, would you have your rams or your lambs ready to go Friday morning? Yes, sir, absolutely would. And I booked a spot for 20. I got more than 20, but uh, I just wanted to get rid of some extra ones. And so I said, well, do you have room for a few more? Because I'd like to throw you a handful of call use as well. Anyways, I'm... <laughs> I'm throwing him uh, about 25 lambs, 26 lambs, and then eight call ewes. So hopefully, I really hopefully he's got he's got room. Anyway, so we we uh, went down to the field, and I would have loved to video this. Went down to the field. They were way down by the well site. Fetched them all back up. I couldn't video it because it's just windier and all get out here today. Anyways, got them up in the yard. Got them into the barn. Sorted them all. It's real dusty in the barn. The chest is like. Feels like I've been shoveling grain for half a day right now, just because all the dust they kick up in that barn. But uh, anyways, they're all sorted. I got to uh, sort and clean some eggs. Then I got to fire up Aunt Jemima over here. There's a big uh, big bag of grain sitting in right, right in the doorway of the barn, right? Right in the way. So I'm gonna get Aunt Jemima fired up. We'll go fetch that out and I'll put it in, put it in here for the night and then I can kick it back over to the barn here tomorrow afternoon. So another interesting news, uh, I've had a heck of a summer. I have had the summer to beat all summers and not at home. I have had uh, a lot, a lot on the go at work. And uh, my boss said to me about a week ago, he said, you know, looking at your vacation tracker, you've got a lot of days you gotta use up. You should probably think about taking some time off. So I says, okay, that, uh, that sounds pretty good. How about, uh, I take Thursday, Friday, and then all next week off. And then, I mean, I won't have used them all up, but I'll be, I'll be making some headway on it. And oh yeah, sure, that's that's good. Um, so today was my first day off, and today was probably today was a pretty critical day getting those sheep sorted. Um, <laughs> anyways, it started off with father-in-law calling over and saying, "Hey, uh, you know, he moved cows the other day. He moved cows off our place, and he moved the cows off the sister-in-law's place." And then, and then, of course, there was some wild shenanigans went off over there, and some cows got separated from some calves, and so he brought some cows back so they could pair them back up with the calves, and then we could get them in the corrals, and then back on the trailer, and he could get away home. And I'm a bit of a cow whisperer. I'm, I got a bit of a, you know, a pretty good aura when it comes to handling animals in a low stress environment. So I went over there, and it went off without a hitch. I think we were there for like seven minutes, and everybody was caught and back on the trailer where they needed to be. So that was pretty mint. Anyways, run home, and uh, then it was like no less than no less than seventeen phone calls, and uh, probably about five or six emails. I had to manage for work, even though I'm on a vacation day. Just when you're when you become important at work, you find yourself in a situation where you're really never not at work, right? And so you disappear for five minutes, and suddenly everybody's got a question. So I had to manage that. And then we got in and then we got into the barn and got the sheep sorted out. So this weekend coming up is, you know, there's going to be a lot going on. There's going to be a, a heck of a lot going on. So today was sorting sheep. Tomorrow is going to be getting them on the trailer. Now, Doug phoned. I got some extra ones coming. He said, like, do you want to meet in Hythe or Beaver Lodge? I said, you know, it doesn't really matter to me either when because I'm the same distance to Hythe or Beaver Lodge. So whichever one's easier. He said, well, why don't we meet in Hythe? And then, uh, and then the, the driver can go down the Emerson Trail to Teepee Creek. And I was like, oh, hang on a second, because I'm right off the Emerson Trail, like right off the Emerson Trail. Like, you know, rather than him stop and hike, like, have him just come right out to our farm instead of, you know, because there's no point in me driving to Hythe and then the driver driving to Hythe and then me driving halfway back from Hythe and then him passing our farm on the way, <laughs> on the way to Teepee Creek. So just like swing in, just swing in. So that, that in and of itself was a huge savings because we were going to have to borrow my father-in-law's stock trailer to haul all 30 sheep. My, my little 16 footer 
will only fit about 20 lambs. So, cause I want to send a few extra. It's like, okay, I got to borrow a truck and a trailer with a goose, like a gooseneck trailer, right? So I need another truck for that. Cause I don't have a gooseneck hitch. So we're going to borrow the father-in-law's. Well, he was hauling cows the other day and blew a tire. So then he took the tire to the tire shop, got it home, went to fix the tire and then, or put the tire back on and realized that the axle was broke on the, the other axle. So then he phoned a welder up and welder come and looked at it and said, eh, I can weld it, but you know, it may never pull straight again. Like, and it, even if I weld it, and even if it does pull straight, like you got three more spots where it's probably going to break here. So this may be a good time to hit the easy button and go straight to the Ritchie Brothers sale. So I'm not using that trailer. So anyways, I was like, oh, I'm in a bit of a bind here. But anyways, it worked really good because uh, if the sheep hauling guy can just come right out to the farm, then he can take everything that we got all in one go. So that's Friday. <clears throat> and then Saturday, me and uh, my buddy Robin, millionaire farmer, we are going to go to a whiskey tasting in Grand Prairie at the Pomeroy Hotel. It's put on uh, in support of the Regional EMS Foundation. So as some of you may be aware, my wife is a paramedic. So EMS, Emergency Medical Services, is a cause that is pretty darn close to my heart. I think there's a lot of things wrong with EMS, specifically rural EMS or, e well, even Grand Prairie. Like, if you think about that, I mean, you call it urban, but really it's a small city. So it kind of still fits in the you know in in the category of rural ems but there's a lot of stuff that's broken with their health healthcare system and there's a but there's a ton of good people that work in there right and so being able to provide some support for some of the initiatives that they're working on just to you know make life a little bit better for some of our first responders is i'm i'm all for that right all for that and uh so we're gonna go out we bought tickets we're gonna have a, a nice evening out we're gonna try different scotches from around Scotland, and not to say around the world, but that's not true. Scotch has to come from Scotland, and uh, so that's going to be a that's going to be a great night. And then, and then Sunday, you know, you think Sunday would be a day of healing, a day of rest? Nope, 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 no, sir, no. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, guts are gonna be rolling. We're probably gonna have to eat some porridge and get our ass out the door because we're butchering turkeys. So. Robin's bringing his turkeys over and we've got our, I don't know, 10 or 11 or however many we've got left that we're going to butcher two at the same time. We're going to make a day of it. We're going to, wife's going to cook, bake some bread. Hey, there's a magpie. Bake some bread and uh, make some soup because, you know, you're not going to want to eat turkey on that day. And uh, we'll get everything processed. We'll get it all cooled off. We'll get it all bagged and then into a freezer. And then there's a couple that we're selling you know, it's a couple that we're doing for family and then we'll keep, you know, whatever we keep for, we're probably just going to grind ours, make grind, ground turkey for the wife likes to make, I don't know, some kind of stir fry or whatever with ground turkey. So I'm not, I'm not one much for cooking a turkey unless it's like, you know, one of three days of the year, right? Like Christmas, Thanksgiving, maybe Easter at best. Other than that, turkey can pretty much go to hell, to be honest with you. And really I'd have been... I'd have been happy if we got rid of every one of those ones and never had to deal with any of them. But uh, the buggers all survived. So now what do you do with that? So now we have to see it through to the end. And then, uh, you know, you regret when they die. But now I kind of regret that they lived. I guess it's kind of a weird thing. All right, so I'm in the barn here now. Never mind the swing sets that we got set up. <laughs> That's the bag of grain I got to move. And these are all the sheep that are going to go down the road today was a tough day for me tomorrow's going to be tougher because some of these like olga right queen there's a few of them in here that like there's a legacy that's being sent down the road here today lots of lots of cool stories like queen was where she at she's right here was off the first lamb crop that we that we had here on the farm right so she's j1 she come off of juliet juliet was one of the originals uh, we got her mom off a fella called Brian Friesen. Actually, he lives up on uh, Hall Court Hill there. And I think he bought some sheep one time and turned out it wasn't for him. Anyways, so I bought five ewes off of him and her mom was her mom was one of them. That was, that was one of the first. Because we bought five from Fairview and then we bought five more from Brian. So she was one of the first. Anyways, 
And then Olga here was a rescue sheep. She was actually hit by a truck and left for dead on the side of the road. And <clears throat> we ended up rescuing her and treating her and nursing her back to health. And she's thrown some really good lambs as well. But they're old, right? I mean, they're, she's probably, well, she was probably a couple, three years old when we got her. And so she's been here for six years. And Olga's, or uh, Queen's been here for seven years. So it's time. It's time to just, you know what, their, 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 their teats are all stretched out, the bags are all stretched out, lopsided, and anyways, yeah, there's only so much you can ask of them, right? So it's time for them to go into a kebab or a falafel or donair, I'm not sure, wherever they send, wherever they end up going, I'm not sure, but uh, then there's a few that are just absolute, I, I don't know if I can say it on YouTube, they're absolute assholes is what they are. So Edith is in here somewhere, or she's right there. And then uh, Samantha, the old split-eared one. Split ear, to me, a split ear is pretty much a death sentence, right? Because that means you're putting your head through a fence and on your way back, you lost your ear tag. You're sticking your head through a fence. <clears throat> you're probably getting out of that fence and causing a lot of, causing me a lot of inputs, causing me a lot of work. So. Those two for sure, they were the first, the first in this pen of all the call U's. All right, well, we've had a bit of supper. Got the kids to bed. Just gonna come out, check on the sheep again, give, give a little bit of hay to the ones that are on the keeper list. Give some water to the ones that are gonna go down the road tomorrow. And, uh, and then do some cleanup in the shop. So we've got space to do some turkey butcher in here on Sunday. It will be interesting because we've had so much trouble with sheep getting out. It will be interesting to see after we send the whole batch to the market if there's any more shenanigans afoot. Because I think the more mature ones are less likely to try and jump the fence or crawl under the fence. Whereas the younger ones, led astray by a couple of shysters, then every, once they go, everybody goes, right? Because, I mean, they're a flock animal. But if there's less individuals trying to get out, it will certainly be interesting to see if they all stay in or not. Anyways, I'm going to call that a night. I was going to come in here in the shop and do some cleanup so that I'd be a little bit better prepared for Sunday turkey business. But it's getting on late and it's, it's time for a cup of tea. So I'm going to shut her down and maybe, just maybe, I'll start again early tomorrow morning. So I'll let you go for now. Hope you're having a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.